Thank you, Ken. We need you every Sunday in so many ways. He was so smooth about that. Good morning. Welcome to Forest Chapel and welcome to Sunday. It is so good to see all of your faces. You welcome me and you make me feel whole inside when sometimes life gets rough. It's so good to be here this morning. Two Sundays ago, um, we were not here, Dad and I, for a very good reason, because we were visiting family in Nashville. Although it was supposed to take us about five hours to get there, it took us 10 because of car trouble and flat tire. But we made it, we had a, a wonderful visit, and. God guided us through those steps of, of trouble. And then we had just barely gotten home, and Dad took another tumble. And we had to call the Life Squad. And we'll be back at the Wound Center every week throughout the, the summer. Dad's got really good bones and really bad skin. They just can't stitch it. So they have to do other things to help his skin. But as Dad says to anyone who will tell him, each and every day, he says, I've got good doctors, I've got good insurance, I've got good kids, and I've got a good, good God. And I can't think of a better reason to gather together this morning than to worship our very good, good God. So welcome to all of you. Welcome to our technical team. Welcome to our musicians. And Pastor Kabamba, good morning. Welcome to you. Good morning, my sister, and welcome back. Thank you. It's good to good be morning, back. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Bob, my friend. I love you, and I love you more. Dad was in such a good mood all morning. He loves to be here at Forest Chapel. Yes. So I'm so glad that mm -hmm. we were able to come this morning. Yes. And guess what? What? I love our core values. They're good core values. Should we read them together? Yes. Let's do. They are... Wellness, Wellness hospitality, hospitality, and relationship, relationship building. And we also have a wonderful foundational scripture that's found in Colossians, the second chapter, verses 6 and 7. Let's read that together. As, As you, you therefore have received, have received Christ, Christ Jesus the Lord, continue, continue to, live to live your lives in him, rooted and, and built up in him, and established in the faith just yes, as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Looks like we do have some announcements. Yes, we do. Okay. So first of all, the Steve Brett's Memorial Work Day will be Saturday, June 24th from 8.30 to noon. Pastor, is there anything that you want to say about that or anything? Please come. Please, Please come. come. Let us love this place. Clean it up. Brother Rick, do you have anything you want to add to that? It's in the newsletter. We, we did, the details are there, but not everybody reads the newsletter. I know that for sure. Yes. So we will keep announcing it. Maybe Very. put the whole thing in the bulletin next Sunday. Very good. I have a friend that lives in Forest Park, and she said, I see that you guys have been feeding students. And sure enough, so it's, no, it's being noticed in the community. So feeding students of Wenton Woods starts June the 5th, or started June the 5th. Anything else we want to say about that, Pastor? And you can read what our very own Kelly wrote here. Um, it is just so beautiful to see a returning guest so involved and she sat down there for those who follow me on facebook i was live streaming and i say what are you doing who you are she introduced herself and she went like this she said i am the sign because we have a written sign at the entrance there and on both sides but she was a written sign inviting the people in that is awesome and she lives right there and she knows about this last year they had a bus so the kids had to go to the bus so she knew the if about the event so she shared that in the um, there and here she sat outside inviting the people inside it was just so beautiful 
So wonderful. thank you for coming, for serving. You're amazing. And uh, our great volunteers, uh, Bob Greenawat, Rick Johnson, Margaret, thank you for coming. God is good. And then also I see Forest Park Kids Club every Saturday continues from 11 to 12. Yes, now we go, we are on summer break. So Christina, who really rocks it, because we have summer camp, it's all written in here, because we have a uh, summer camp, she feels that we need to go on a break because these kids are coming to summer camp. And then we are going to have a one day vacation Bible school. So we are in conversation with Armstrong, some volunteers who will come from there, and our volunteer. We are doing great. God is good. So good. And yeah. any other announcements? We want to welcome our very own Jalen Phillips. We baptized him a year or so ago. There were four. Remember? Hello? Yes. Great. Who is that who just came in? Is that Candace? It has been a long time. Thank you for coming. Love you. I was thinking of you and Kaziah. Please tell her we're thinking of him. So we had Bible study this morning with um, this young man. He wants what Kaziah wanted. Remember, wanted, uh, he, she wanted to go closer to God. So that's what Jalen is asking. He wants to go to grow closer to God and sees that it can happen attending here. Please help this 22-year-old young man who wants to grow closer to God. I go to what Willie said at our at leadership team. Let's hear from these people who are coming. What is it they, that they see? What is it that you, Kelly, Kyle, Diana, see at Forest Chapel? Help us see what you see. Am I making sense? Thank you, young people. You go like that. That's good. I just love you. I think we have spoken Okay, Okay, Jalen, we're so glad you're here. And may you draw closer to God right now as we start with music. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this first song, it's, uh, it's actually coming from a, a place of thankfulness. Um, I'm even thankful for the, the burnt offering that we had up here. And I'm thankful for your eye. So, uh, one. What can I give to you? What can I offer to a king? For all of the love you've shown, for all your mercy over me. saving me thank you God 
for saving me. The rock of salvation, my hope is built on nothing less. Morning by morning, how great is your faith. Thank you, God. Beloved, let us come and connect this moment on a scale of one to ten. Where do you see yourself this moment in your relationship with God? It's okay if it's at one. It's okay if it's at nine, but really find where you are on the scale of one to 10 so that you can see where you are when we are closing the service. See how you have journeyed with God through this one hour of worship. Jesus, thank you for being here. Thank you for being our Savior. Here we are, dear God, rock of ages, on which we stand. Thank you for being our hope. Help us as we embark on this journey of worship. Allow us to hear you. Speak to us. 
quiet our minds so that we can hear you. You have watched over us. You have accompanied us throughout the week. We traveled the highways, dangerous highways, but you kept us for us to come here because you want to show us something that only you know. You want us to hear something that only you know. Have your way through every one of us. Empty us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, God. It is in your name, powerful name, that we pray. And we all say, Amen. And we are going to sing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, right? It is. I'm sorry? Three verses. Which one? One, two, and four. Thank you. Those who are able can stand. Good morning. Good morning. Children's moment. Yes. It's finally raining. Yes. I'm so happy. My yard won't be dead anymore. 
Hello. So, this morning, I woke up, and I got ready, and I got in the car, and then I came here, and I realized I forgot to prepare for children's moment. And I thought, oh no, what am I going to do? <laughs> but then I was hearing the first song, Thank You God for Saving Me. And I thought, how many times in life have we been in a position where we just don't know what to do and we just start praying? So many times in life we just ask for prayer over and over and over again. And I, you know, I think... Why is it only, for some of us, I've gotten a lot better, but it used to be that I would only pray in times of need, mm. when I really needed something. Like if I needed to pass a test, <laughs> or if I was in trouble, or if I knew somebody that was in trouble, those were only the times when I would pray. And then mom and dad would always say, you know, you need to pray all the time. Prayer needs to be in your life. And I would think, whatever. <laughs> but as I've grown, grown older, I have really made an effort to really just try to pray at all times, even when I don't need to be saved. Because I can still say, thank you, God, for saving me, even in the good times. When wonderful things are happening, I can say, oh my gosh, thank you, God. When I'm just in the middle of my day, I can just take some time and go, thank you, God, for this wonderful rain. Thank you, God, for the video game that I just beat. Thank you, God, for the video game I'm about to buy. Thank you, God, for all the wonderful things in my life. And in the scripture, we have a man who could not walk, and who was always brought to the beautiful gates, and he would ask for prayers or for money, and he was given a miracle. And in his case, he went and said, thank you, God, for saving me. But those who came to him, who prayed for him, the ones who gave, allowed this opportunity to happen, they come with the message of always being thankful of always looking towards God. So as we go about this week, we get ready to go into the wonderful rain that is out there, let's remember to always ask God for thanks and always pray even when we're not in a bad situation. Pray during the good. Pray during the happy and not just the sad. All right? Yes. I'm going to say a prayer, and you can all repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Help us remember to pray in the good as well. Amen.
in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Amen. Thank you, Kelly, for choosing that exact song. And thank you for the mark that you and Kyle are making on Forest Chapel and the contributions that you are making. We notice. Thank you. And before we read today's scripture, we will first have a prayer of illumination. Dear God, we celebrate this Sunday morning. We celebrate the rain and we celebrate each other in the encouragement and the love that comes from a church family. We ask your blessings upon each and every person here today, as well as those worshiping online. Help them with the burdens that they carry. See them through each day. Help us to thank you and to pray to you and to talk to you, not just in the good times, not just in the bad times, but all the time. We thank you for the scripture that we are about to read and the chance that each of us have to read your word every day. Thank you for this Sunday. Thank you for each other. We love you, Lord. Love Amen. You. Today's scripture reading comes from Acts, the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple, the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts. Walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of God with the people of God. Thank you, my sister. I greet you again 
those who are present here and those who are home, wherever you are, maybe in the car, and uh, worshiping together. In the name of Jesus. It comes from verse 6. We know this narrative. We have heard, read it several times. And I did, and I've preached on this several times. This time, it came to me when I read the music sent by Willie. It took me from where I was. Everything in me sent me to this passage and to in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, I pray that the word of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. And dear Lord, I join in what my daughter said. Sometimes we don't know what to say. That's where I am right now. I know what I studied. I know the knowledge I have of this word in Greek. But dear God, speak to me. Amen. What is in the name? These people, and Peter opened his mouth in verse 6. We all know what's going on here. But he says, gold, silver, and gold, or gold, I do not have. What, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. What do you have? What do I have? I was speaking with this young man, Jalen. That was on Friday, right? Yes. And Fridays are my Sabbath day. But I was here, and the fact that my sister, Tony, had to take a week off, texted me, and I texted back, you have only one life to live. Stay home. I will do what I have to do. What I'm not able to do, I don't finish. The world won't die. We'll still be breathing. So I'm here with this young man who comes and want to grow closer to God. I hold his hand. Beloved, I hold his hand. And I look at him. I say, son, there are times that I feel disconnected from God. I don't think he believed me. I, maybe I think I confused him. Can a pastor be disconnected? All that I can do as long as I live is to be true to myself. And to my God, I say, we will grow closer to God together. What do you have? What can you say? 
in the name of Jesus, comma, finish the sentence. Peter said what he said. He had something to give to this guy who was looking for help, material help. And today, it's not by coincidence, and really, when you sent the music, that was way before Jalen came to me. When I went to this passage, and he comes, beloved, here he is, first chapel, every one of you. Look at this child, this young man, and say, this, in the name of Jesus, he wants to grow closer to God. In the name of Jesus, say, what is that that you're going to give him? What do you have? What do I have to give him? What I had that moment was God empty me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. For your Holy Spirit will guide me. And the Holy Spirit gave me words to pray, to say, to the young man. And he is here this morning, Forest Chapel. There is life. Kalia is here, has been coming, want to go closer, closer to God. Kelly and Kyle are here. This is something, friends at Forest Chapel. What do you have? So this morning, what we're going to do is you have the bulletin. In the name of Jesus, finish the sentence. In the name of Jesus, after you finish the sentence for yourself, finish the sentence for the Forest Chapel United Methodist Church. Finish the sentence for the mission that God gave you. In the name of Jesus, I can do all things because Jesus strengthens me. In the name of Jesus, I will be here. I'll continue to be here with his children and disciple them, love them. I'm in the hallway. Kids are coming out. I stand right there greeting them. This little girl, Janae, stands, stops. The teacher is saying, let them move. She stops. She's looking straight at me, and I look at her. She becomes a Peter. I become Kabamba. Pastor, yes, sweetie. Where were you on Saturday? I was here. My mom was here. We were waiting for you. Where were you? You know, Bob and Rick, that's when we were at annual conference. I forgot to tell the parents that I will be away because Christina is not here. That's why I just said, don't count on me because I'm having surgery on Wednesday. I won't be here on Saturday. And I know my brother Rick really wants to do it during this vacation, but I just went ahead and said, don't come. I don't want anybody to come here. And somebody forgot. 
this child with love. challenged me. I really wanted to be here, but we waited 15 minutes. She went on and on and on. And I said, you know what, sweetie? I'm sorry. The line said, and the teachers are watching. And I said, okay. And the coming Saturday, I don't think they will let me come because I'm in trouble, I'm punished. What did you do? I stole food. Oh, you know what? When I was your age, I was stealing sugar and powdered milk. <gasps> really? I said, yes, I did. I got in trouble all the time until I had to stop it. So when you stop it, you'll be fine. Yesterday, Oh, on Friday, I got a phone call. That is the parent. Pastor, are you going to be there on Saturday? I apologize. I really apologize. I told the story. The, just the same way I just told you. I told the entire story. At first, she sympathized with me that the daughter challenged me. And I said, no, she did well. I need that. And then when I went into what she talked about stealing, she said, oh, she told you all of that. I said, yes, and I told her all of what I did when I was her age. She laughed. We connected. Life is beautiful. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, I will build relationships for the transformation of our community, one child at a time. In the name of Jesus, I will speak life into myself. I have to repeat the affirmations and live into them and they will become part of who I am. Because I know, I started, I became aware of the presence of God at the age of 19 as I shared with you. And there are times where my God, I am in darkness. I have to come back to God. Children, thank you for coming to us. Thank you for being God who walks into my office. God is within you. Take this in the name of Jesus and speak it to yourself. Finish the sentence and live with that affirmation, with that, proclaim it on you. Coming to church is not in vain. It is transformative. There has to be transformation. There has to be change. If we come to church, we are the same as we were 20 years ago. It's a mess. I thank God that we are here today. God spoke to me because of the name of Jesus. And at this time, I just want to invite us to a place of, con of confession. Let us just come within ourselves, each one of us. And Let's hear this prayer. 
it will start with words that you may have read on our website, Discipleship Ministries. And then it will end up in my words. So I adapted it. Almighty God, help us to empty ourselves of all that hinders our awareness of your presence with us. Fill us with the joy of knowing your continuing presence so that, like Peter, who spoke in the power of the Holy Spirit, we too might in the same power of the Holy Spirit speak words of hope, words of encouragement, words of edification, words of support in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, Jesus has emptied us, has filled us with the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that? Have you allowed Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit? Have you? Don't be shy. How are you? On a scale of one to 10, where do you see yourself? In the name of Jesus, right now, don't be shy. It's okay if you don't want to say it. It's okay if you say it. Anybody brave? On a scale of one to 10, where are you? Who said seven, Rick? Mm -hmm. Seven. It's okay. Eight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let us go to the Lord praying for our loved ones. We say the name, the names of these people that we want to lift up before the throne of grace. For Bob Gaynor, Bob Starnes, and Juanita Milford, in your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. For Pastor Kabamba, Lynn Hoff, and Pat Krenner, in your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. For Mary Halpin, Liz Chapman, and Bob Greenwald, in your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. For James Graham, Donnie Moore, Henrietta Wells, and Marty O'Connor, in your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. And dear God, I lift up Jalen Phillips. In your mercy, Lord, hear our Forever. prayer. I lift up the mother of Raj, Aisari Tamang. I lift up this student 
in Ludiana, Avishek Tapa. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. I lift up a friend of the Natskodis, Anne Kunimura. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. I lift up Sarah Lee, Dr. Lee's sister in South Korea. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. I lift up Lynette Reveal, Marilyn Reveal's daughter. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. I lift up Celia Ship, mother, uh, daughter of Carol Lee. Susie Suggs, daughter of Claire Benison. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Anna, Claire Benison's granddaughter. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Todd Mormon, son of Cleo and Otis Mormon. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Dear God, we pray for these young men. Ryan Cartwright, Xavier Vines, Ben Watson, James Lake, Jr. In your mercy, Lord, hear our Amen. prayers. We lift up all of us. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the kingdom and for forever. Amen. At this moment, we are going to offer our gifts for the only purpose of sponsoring the ministry of the gospel in our community and around the world. Amen? Thank you. lift up uh, Monica Gaynor and her husband, Bob. Um, he's getting ready to go through a, a heart procedure this week, and uh, just want to keep him in our prayers as well. She read it. She said it. Okay. <laughs> this song is called Your Name is Power. No. 
power beloved you have been in the presence of God like Moses who was in the presence of God when he came back to the valley those who saw him everyone saw that his face was bright shining because he had been in the presence of God. You have been a place of worship. Go from this place into the valley. Speak life. Every word that will come out of your mouth will bring life. That you will awaken somebody because you have the word of life within you. Go in peace. For the Lord has made his face to shine upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I will be in the parlor. For anybody who wants, who has a question about disaffiliation, I will take some time in the parlor and I will answer the question. Thank you, Brother Hugh, for bringing that question to me. So, thank you. 